What's up everybody, this is Stubbs here from Retro Handhelds, and today we're gonna to talk about some of my favorite Amazon Prime Day deals, October 10th and 11th, Ah, oh, I can't believe it. We have a lot to cover, and we're gonna barrel through a bunch of stuff that I've picked up so that you don't have to, so stay with me on this journey. Let's get our rain jackets on. We're going to the rainforest, because it's the Amazon jungle. Kind of ironic. And check our description and timestamps for pricing. We will keep that up to date as these sales go live. Let's get started. As you already know, some of my favorites are gonna be the original Miu Mini. You have a lot of options for operating systems. Love the Miu Mini. Face buttons feel really good. You know, coming in at under a hundred bucks, you can play up to PS1 on it. And it's really tiny and pocketable. Load yourself up with Tiny Best Set Go and you got a retro stew going. Similar vein, we have the Ambernic RG35XX. One of my favorite handhelds in the past few years. This runs games from NES all the way up to PS1. And you can find this one for around 40 to $60. And yeah, just a really nice handheld overall. It's just easy to pick up and play. And if you have a Miu Mini, the SD card is cross compatible as far as game saves. This has been a daily driver for me going on a year. And if I go camping or something, this is always the handheld I bring. It just fits in the pocket really easily. Battery life lasts forever, especially now that they've upped it to 2600 milliamp hour. But this is one you buy if you want it preloaded, ready to go while we're on the subject. The Miu Mini Plus. This is the upgrade from the Miu Mini. It's a little bit bigger. Besides adding Wi-Fi, the CPU is the same, so the screen is a little bit bigger. Again, this one's under $100. And yeah, this one's a lot of fun. Moving on down the line, Trim UI Smart. It's nice, it's compact. The screen isn't so great, and I found the software to be pretty limited. However, now, I haven't loaded it on yet, but now there's Menu UI for this. Not only for this, but if you take your Menu UI SD, card. You can put it in this and you can swap it straight into your 35XX, your Miu Mini, and your Miu Mini Plus, and your games are going to carry over. In fact, the OS is going to just load right up. So you just need one SD card you swap between systems and all your save files are there. It's the only OS that you need. For the price, it's great. You know, again, I found this on Amazon for around $40 to $50. Now on the cheap end, you got the SUP handheld. The king of puns. You have your classic Fami clone menu, although this doesn't have the usual music, so it's nice to change it up. These go for varying ranges from $5 up through about $20. It does actually have Mario, which is rare these days for these handhelds, Nintendo. But you know what? Sure, the emulation runs a little bit fast, but for a few bucks, this is one model that doesn't seem to have too bad of screen tearing. Yeah, this is a great one to give to the kids. You can upgrade the battery. Nice, mushy rubber membrane buttons that don't feel too bad. You know what? This is super duper lightweight. That's all what's up with it. Plays NES games and that's it. The RG Nano. So this is running the Funkey S software. And again, around $70. It has a one-to-one -one aspect ratio screen and is a teeny tiny looking little Game Boy. When people see this, they say, tiny Game Boy, please. I mean, you can actually use it. But yeah, I've seen this as cheap as $55 and as much as 80. So depending where you go, check your Amazon listings. You can throw this on a keychain. It is teeny tiny and it's made out of metal. Nice mushy D-pad. Base buttons are actually not too bad. They feel good. This feels better than a fun key S as far as playing it goes. I just like the feel of the buttons a little bit better. Yeah, and Bernic RG Nano. Let's talk about some other stuff on the desk. So nothing crazy here. This is a Gon charger made by Shargeek. It is around 50 to $60. This has USB-A, USB-C, 22.5 watts, and then 100 watt areas for two USB-C ports. I've enjoyed this for the last year or so. Now this company is actually called Charge, so they got rid of the geek and now it's just Charge. And it's in yellow. As long as we're talking about Gon chargers, they also make smaller size ones. They also make power banks, but this is a bit more spendy. This one's actually typically in around the 100 to $200 range, depending on the sale. And the Storm 2 is a beast, man. It is just an awesome power bank that will last you for days. I have never seen it run out of battery. I've used it during power outages. I've used it camping. It has charged my entire family's worth of devices without breaking a sweat. Really love this. It has an LCD menu and you can see the wattage it's pulling. And then it has multiple outputs there and this thing can pretty much handle it all. It'll charge your iPad, it'll charge your laptop. A few other accessories. This one's made by here, here cool. You just have some extra ports here. It's a USB-C adapter dock. You get your micro USB if you need to connect. Yep, this is around 15 bucks. Next, we need to talk about the Pow Kitty RGB30. This one's interesting. You might have watched my live review for it recently, but I like it. You know, it's funny. It's a it's a one to one aspect ratio screen, so it's going to be ideal for Pico 8. Great for Game Boy, Game Boy Color. You can throw ArcOS on here 
and have the best time ever. And you'll typically find this on Amazon for around $100. I've seen it vary from $95 to $120. It has an RK3566, so it's gonna play up to PSP, Nintendo DS, N64, and Dreamcast. It's gonna look a little funny with that one-to-one -one aspect ratio of screen if you're playing something like PSP or any 16 by nine content, but 4.3 is gonna scale pretty well. 3.2 content, eh, it'll look okay. You might need to add some bezels. But playing something like Game Boy Color, especially on the screen, is very nice and comforting. It's a good weight. It's a nice alternative to the more expensive analog pocket, which I actually wasn't the biggest fan of in the end, mainly because of the short battery life and uh, the ergonomics. So this is, a, I find to be more ergonomic, much longer lasting battery, easier to hold, nice, brilliant, beautiful screen, lightweight, two SD card slots. You can order it with games so it's ready to go. And Pow Kitty did a great job on this handheld. Next up, you have these telescopic controllers. I'm gonna show you a few of them. So this is the Game Sir X2. This one's great because if you have a folding phone like the Surface Duo or the, uh, the Samsung, if you have a Samsung Z Fold or Microsoft Surface Duo, having this port on the left is huge. And this is the only one that has it on the left. So we have a similar, a Game Sir. X2 Pro, and they moved to the right. But this one's great for a phone, gets nice and wide. Both of these in the $40 to $60 range, depending. Yeah, they just always come in handy, so I keep a few of them around. Lately, I've been getting larger telescopic controllers because they typically feel a little bit better on my hands. And that's where something like the Moga XP7X Plus comes in. So it's just bigger. It looks kind of like that new Sony Portal handheld that's coming out. You basically have an Xbox controller split down the middle, but you do have a charging port up top so you can connect it via USB if you want. Other than that, it is by default Bluetooth and it has Bluetooth or USB toggle down there. Nice big face buttons, very comfortable sticks. Since this is Bluetooth, this is another one that's gonna work great with something like a Z Fold or a Microsoft Surface Duo. And you might even get a small tablet in there. Analog L2 R2, that's really nice. Alternatively, you could get one by a different brand. This is the Nacon MGX Pro, and they have a smaller size one that people often use for the Surface Duo, me included. But this, if you want better ergonomics, it definitely makes it wider, but great for a foldable, stretches out well, good for a phone. Better D-pad, better sticks, better shoulders than their regular MGX. I like the finish on this. Big face buttons, Xbox button, has Bluetooth as well. You know, both of these are under $100. Both of them come in at around $100. Next, if you want to step it up, you can get something like the iPega 9067. A tried and true classic if you're playing on a tablet. This is a Apple iPad Gen 4. And man, this thing really comes in handy. Even more so if you're using it on an Android device because you get all these extra function buttons that are all mappable. This is one of the original controllers I used when I first got into the hobby. I used it on my old Kindle Fire back in 2014. 14, and let me tell you, this controller has come in handy over the years, and it still works well. Oh, and by the way, this tablet ain't half bad either. Nice retina screen. It's not OLED or anything. It's an Apple product. It works. It's simple, and it's pretty powerful. This is right before they switched over to that M1 chip you see in the new 5th gen iPad Air. So this is the iPad Air Gen 4, but man, look at that screen. And there's a lot of great retro gaming options on these. Not only that, but now you can connect later generation iPads like this. It has iPad OS 17 on it. You can set this up as a separate monitor. So you can use it on a retro handheld as a second monitor on a Switch. It's neat. Of course, this is gonna run you about three or four bills. I always get these refurbished or renewed if I can. So check Amazon stock for this. This one in particular is a open box item or a refurbed item. It was like $350. Look how wide this, this iPega gets. Look at that, that's crazy. Just look at that. You could, you could, fit, a, you could fit a laptop in there. Now these you can find as cheap as $30. So, and lastly, we have the beastly iPega upgraded version. 9083S, $33. Also stretches crazy wide. Look at that, look at that stretch. So here's an 11 inch, this is an 11 inch Lenovo Tab P11 Pro. This thing's really cool. 8,200 milliamp hour battery, 128 gigs of internal storage, four gigs of RAM. This is around $300. And it does have a 2.5K OLED display, 11.2 inch. So this is an awesome price. And people don't realize that Lenovo makes these tablets still, you know, it directly has mostly just Google apps, very clean, no bloatware, great for drawing. It has a MediaTek Companio 1300T in Android 12. And it's very highly rated. I recommend it. 
get yourself a keyboard case for this if you want. And uh, I mean, look at this giant retro handheld I have now. And the 9083, man, the nice thing about this telescopic controller is that it's more ergonomic than the 9067. Has nice rounded bump outs. D-pad feels great. Face buttons feel good. This is another one that's gonna be great for a folded phone. Fire 11 Max, this thing's cool. You know, you might have a Kindle tablet around. Uh, we've given them to our kids for years as far as the uh, the 8 inch, the 7 inch. Now they're on the 10 inch size. But dad gets the 11 inch. Nice screen. Finally, like a decent screen from Amazon in one of these tablets. This should do pretty well for emulation. I need to stress test it more. I mostly just use it for Kindle content and for Prime Video content, as well as some light tasks. You do have a keyboard here. Uh, you can get this add-on case which attaches on the bottom and then this one has a lavender case slim case that fits on and what's really cool and this is genius is they designed their proprietary accessories to work with each other so you can have the keyboard on here so i found it to be a very easy user-friendly experience amazon it can be hit or miss on these tablets for me i really love their kindles which we'll talk about in a minute but uh as far as their tablets go yeah this one actually was able to get for 130 dollars so it's been 50 percent off which is 150 and then they're your their incentives you can trade in old products and then get an extra boost so everything's said and done with my trade-in i got this for a hundred dollars flat I like it. Speaking of Kindles, we got three here. Paperwhite. The Paperwhite is awesome. Had this one for quite a while now. You can get it for around 120 bucks right now. I always recommend to get refurbed if you can, save some money. It's the Amazon return policy, so if there's any issues, you can always send it back and get a new one if you really want, but this one is great in low light. It has that warm light effect for reading in bed at night. It's the smallest size they have right now. Very easy to one hand, especially when it's out of its case, but I do like to protect it. Crazy long battery life. Lasts for months. I rarely have to charge it, like three times a year possibly. And it just keeps me reading on the go. Lately, I've been using the Kindle Oasis. This is an upgraded model, again on sale. I got this one for about $150 after a trade-in. You actually have physical buttons now. Not as long of a battery life, and you don't get the USB-C like you do in the later gen Kindle, like the one I just showed you. This has the micro USB still. Best Buy always has these on display, so you can head to one of their stores and hold it in person, but very lightweight, easy to toss in a bag. And these cases, man, these cases they make, auto sleep and wake function. This, this earns a place in my collection. Next up, the big boy, the Kindle Scribe that comes with this pen. I mean, it's a giant Kindle, and this is actually the one I use the most. You can't run RetroArch on here, but it does have a web browser, and you can take notes if you want. That's not all. You ready for this? Check this out. You get one of these handy doodads? It's an auto page turner. So you just clamps on right here. Okay, then you take this thing and uh, you just click it. Look at that. You ever seen one of that? You ever seen one of those do that? Look at that, hands free. So you're just you're just sitting there, you're just reading. Can't be bothered to uh, push your finger against the screen. Nope, click it. Warm, wrapped up in blankets, cozy, reading a book. That's nice. Look at those pages turn. I've just saved a lot of effort. Put my body to use burning calories from my mind, not from my hands going like this. Next up, the beast, the Samsung Tab S9. This thing is really neat. Also comes with a pen, which feels very good to write on. Crazy 10,000 milliamp hour battery in the Plus model. In the standard model here, you have a 8,000 some milliamp hour battery. And then in the Ultra model, which is a 14 inch version of this, you get something like a 14,000 milliamp hour battery. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, this is a bit spendier. Typically you find it around 700 to $900. Check for those refurb deals. This has a AM OLED screen. It's beautiful. This is probably the nicest tablet I've ever had in my life. And you can use it to play some of your favorite games. I typically use this one if I wanna play Hearthstone because it's beautiful to see that card artwork, especially on an AM OLED screen. The screen though, be warned, is very glossy. You can see lots of reflections in my camera, everything else. Yeah, so perhaps getting a anti-glare screen protector on this one would be good. 
Now this is rocking that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, the same as what's in the Odin 2 by AYN. And so this thing is going to pack a wallop. It's gonna play up to Nintendo Switch emulation. I mean, this is the one to beat as far as tablets go for gaming. It's incredible. Pair this one with an iPega. Oh man, you got a gaming stew going. Thin, lightweight, pen magnetically attaches. Gotta love those magnets. And check this out. You put it in here, all right? You put it in your dock. Attaches right like that. You can do some typing, or you can do some hearth stoning. There you go, Gareth. And it just magnetically snaps right off with the pin comes with it. Nice multi-purpose device. A little spendy, so just know what you're getting into here. You'd be easily still served, as long as you're okay with less performance, you'd be easily well served for media consumption uh, with something like the Lenovo Tab P11 Pro or just an Apple iPad. Of course, there's the iPad Pro, but this screen beats any tablet screen I've ever seen. This is the most incredible, beautiful, gorgeous screen, and you will pay the price for it. Battery life is really nice. Do you know that you can pick up the Steam Deck on Amazon? Not sold officially by Valve on Amazon, but lots of third-party sellers I'm seeing are listing this with Prime shipping. So if there's any issue, you get that easy Amazon return policy. I added on some fun green stickers there. This is the 512 model. But I'm seeing some listings and they're not even marked up. You know, they're marked up by like $10 from the Valve listing with Prime shipping. I mean, check it out in our description. Steam Deck really gets it done. You can do everything on here. You can do all of your retro emulation. You can do all of your modern PC gaming. You're gonna have some issues with the latest PC games. Starfield, I don't, don't recommend on here. Baldur's Gate 3, I don't recommend on here. They'll play, but they might not be the greatest. Other than that though, this thing absolutely tears it up on every front. I love the Steam Deck, super comfortable. One I always throw with me in a bag on vacation. Speaking of bags, always good to have a great tote bag. This is a tool bag, but I use it to tote around handhelds. You can put handhelds in the sides. You can put handhelds in the middle. I have all leather waxed canvas and leather. Here's one from Waterfield Design. Options, throw the handhelds in here. Here's the Brog Ally case, which they have those on Amazon too. And yeah, but this actually is for toting around my handhelds around the house. If you're upgrading your PC, you might need some extra storage. And these Samsung solid state drives are freaking awesome. Here's a PCIe Gen 4 solid state drive. This is a 980 Pro. These have crazy fast read write speeds. And this one comes with a heatsink on it. You can actually take it out of the heatsink if you want and fit it into some of these handhelds. Highly recommended. Single sided, that is key. So you can find this anywhere from, depending on the size, and you can actually, if you want it just 500 gigs, you can get this as cheap as $60. This one is the two terabyte model. So one terabyte's $85, two terabyte starts at 130. And if you want it with the heatsink, surprisingly, it's also only $130. That's a crazy deal. So I thought this would be upper end 200 for the two terabyte, but 130 bucks. Can you believe how cheap storage is getting? What in the world? Likewise, if you want external storage, I recommend two terabyte portable Crucial X6. I use this all the time for testing. I keep all my ROMs and things I need on here for Windows handhelds, as well as Android. Just comes in handy. And while we're on the subject of storage, of course, micro SD cards. Tis the season to stock up on micro SD cards. Crazy low prices. These are my top three favorites. The SanDisk Extremes are great for the Ally or the Steam Deck. The Samsung 256 Evo is on the cheaper side, great for something like a Nintendo Switch or Android handhelds. And then the Samsung 128 Pro is kind of in between these two. And that one's gonna be great on a wide range of handhelds, anywhere from the Steam Deck to your Android handhelds. I wouldn't spend the extra money for something like the 35XX or a sub $100 handheld. You can get away with the Samsung Evo for that. All of these, are crazy low prices right now, ridiculous. If you have the money for it, I would just go ahead and go with the Extreme, however. That's gonna be future-proofed and very, very fast read-write speeds, long life. If you wanna save a little money, you can get multi-card packs. These PNY cards are great for that. My favorite budget handheld of 2023 so far has got to be the Retroid Pocket 2S. 
Unfortunately, you can't get the 2S on Amazon Prime yet. You can get the Flip though, which has a little bit faster processor or the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, both having the Unisoc T618 chipset. This rocks the T610 chipset, so just a little bit less performant, but still awesome nonetheless. These are clickable joysticks and they're hall joysticks. You get a nicer panel there, better D-pad, face buttons, L2, R2. This all around is a much better handheld than the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. And I wish it was on Amazon, so check back in our link. We're gonna add that in as soon as they drop it. But you can get the flip, which is still fun. Well, here's one that is on Amazon, the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. This is a beautiful screen. It's a 16 by nine T618 handheld. So this is gonna play again all the way up to PS2 and GameCube, not the whole library. So be aware of that, but a good portion. This is one of the best T618 handhelds you can get, rivaled, for me anyways, only by the Anburnic RG405V. This is on Amazon as well, of course. And this is a little more ergonomic for me. I like that. It also has a fan on the back. While that doesn't help the games run any better, it just helps keep it cool because the chipset can run hot, so be aware of that. This has a little more ergonomic backing and hull joysticks. Also runs Android, just like this, and the Retroid Pocket 2S, which is touchscreen, nice vertical. It is thick though, it is a chonker. This thing is freaking huge, but I don't care, I love it. I'm gonna look at a few controllers. Look at that, look at that fun light up. Isn't that cool? This is a Switch Pro clone. Works well for retro handhelds as well. Android devices called the Firefly. It's worked well in my testing. I've used it for various handhelds and things like that. I think it's pretty good value for the money. You can find it around 30 to $40. You can change these colors, by the way. So it can do purple, yellow, red. That's cool. You can also swap out the D-pad. Look at this. You don't like that D-pad? No problem. You can put in this D-pad and then it rocks like an Xbox Elite controller. Fancy schmancy. PXN makes these P50 controllers. And the P50 is just a nice all around great for Switch, you can get this for $23.99, which is a awesome deal for what you get here. This thing is a beast. We've taken it camping. The kids love using it for when we're playing Switch games, and it's just always worked. This is the go-to controller for most of us in our family if we're playing Switch. It also works for retro handhelds, Android devices, ergonomic. Kind of feels like a mixed together PlayStation and Xbox controller. Everything's laid out nicely. Now you can also get, my daughters love this one, this one's made by Nexigo, and it's actually a little bit more expensive than the PXN, although the PXN normally is higher priced. So this is $39.99, and it is adorable. They have other colorways, but uh, I mean, look at that. Just look at that thing. Lights up. I like the PXN better though. One other fun gaming peripheral is this one by 8 Doe. So what this is, is it plugs into a PS1 or PS2 and lets you remotely play like a PS4, PS5 controller and you can play and use a modern controller on your original PlayStation 1 hardware. I tell you, it's nice not having a cord for my PS1. You wanna talk about keyboards? Let's talk about keyboards. So this one's been popular lately. This is the 8-Bit Do retro keyboard here. It has this fun programmable switch, so you can program these to do a lot of your common Windows functions. I like having those big buttons. You know, maybe if I'm doing a live stream, start and stop and then eject Zoo from the live stream. I like the aesthetic and I like the, I really like the tactile, listen to these keys, I like that tactile response. Really good travel, just very fast response time. Coming over from something like the Boy, Boy, Boy Matcha keyboard here. These are softer, I believe they're browns. This is okay, I felt I was a little slower typing on it, although I like the green aesthetic. One awesome one is these keyboards made by Royal Kludge. Royal Kludge makes these, you know, 40%, 60% keyboards, so you're gonna miss out on numpad and, and arrow keys. This one comes in all white, and it is RGB, so it does light up. The Apito is awesome, around $100. It is Bluetooth, 2.4 gigahertz enabled. You can plug it directly in like I have. Thick. I wanna make 3D printed ones that really stick these spikes out more, so they're almost painful. Stimulate your pancreas good acupressure points, you know how it goes. You need to keep healthy when you're an aging gamer. Oh, if you need some power, man, get yourself set up with something like this. Anchor makes these, these are on sale right now. Look how many things you can plug into here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 things, all, all the, the jewels. Anchor 351 power strip, already it's compatible. You can plug your 351 in here. Cool.
Well, I hope you have rekindled your love for Amazon after watching this video because there are some absolutely amazing deals going on. Which ones are you picking up? Let us know in the comments below. We want to hear. And also, if you want more Amazon Prime deals, take a look at my buddy Zoo's videos on our channel. And check out our website, retrohandhelds.gg. We have a Amazon Prime write-up article that is a really nice deals roundup for you, written by our very own Raven Mage. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Stubbs. Please take care of your handhelds and take care of each other.